Okay, this is one of two videos. This is the brief one where you know how to use Cheat Engine and the cheat tables, you're just not too sure about the item editor specifically. I do have the stat editor as well, but I'll be going over that in the detailed one since I find it to be intuitive, so it's not so much how do you use it, but more like what can you do with it. Whereas the item editors can be more like how do you use this. So, you already have Cheat Engine in your computer. To get the item editor, this is where I got it from Game CMD website, gives you some information, a brief description, then author cab 88 for this cheat table. You can click the link here. Takes you to the media fire download. Go ahead and download. And it's ready to go, no zip file or anything. So I'll put that there. I already have them over here, but I'll just have them again over here for the tutorial, right? I suggest being in windowed mode. You're going to be switching back and forth a lot. If you don't know how to go to windowed mode, very simple. Just go to display. It'll probably be full screen by default. Change it to windowed. Keep it HD for Gustas. And we're ready to go. So I already played the beginning scene and we're in Haven. We just woke up. I haven't even gone to the hinterlands or anything. So this is the earliest we can access a store here in the blacksmith. So go ahead, open. Head over to your crafting materials to sell, and before you start selling, open your cheat table. Go ahead and say yes for allowing the app to make changes. It's perfectly safe, don't worry. And then you click this icon in the top left corner here. Hit Dragon Age Inquisition, that's the game this cheat table's for. Hit yes. And before you start selling, I recommend going here. You can either check the box or press the spacebar, it does the same thing. And this will allow you to sell items while retaining a full stack. What does that mean? That's what that means. So just go ahead and do that. You can go back and do it again if you want some more gold. Or if you can't be bothered, you can go here into the Inquisition Editor. You'll have to exit the menu and go to the Hero menu for these items to populate. But you can do it there and edit the gold value. But I'll go ahead and stay here for now. Perfect, now we're rich. Richer. <laughs> then you go to the buyback menu and now you're ready to start editing items. Use the shop item editor. You can use this but it's just gonna be a mess and it's not what it's intended for. We're in a shop so use the shop editor. right? And you'll be utilizing this. So right now, this is a question mark because we don't know what item we're editing. We have to select it and bind it so that we know which item we'll be swapping. This is the open. This is the link to the web page that will give you a list of all the base game item codes. It'll probably have a white background. I have a dark mode because my eyes strain easily. So let's say I want Dragonthorn to be another herb, right? So good thing about this is it's pretty intuitive intuitive. Oh, and if you don't know how to bring up the search feature in browsers, I know some people who haven't, it's fine. You do control F. You'll want to know how to do that for this. Then you can just type in herbs and it'll start where the herb list commences. Let's say we want this vein. We go back here. It's not bound to the item yet. How we do that? We go here, just sell one, and if you notice now it's changed and you can confirm it is tied to Dragonthorn here and hit cancel. Don't mess with the gray stuff at all. This is the actual item code itself. You edit any of these and you're gonna probably ruin your game's files and you'll have to repair it or reinstall it because this will be editing the actual file. What we're doing, we're not editing the file, we're just tricking the store into thinking it has the item we want. So it's different and thus why we need this function instead. So once you have an item that's addressed, go ahead and either click on the square or just press the spacebar. It'll let you know what you need. Go ahead and paste it. And in case you paste a code over or a, an item string over that has an ending white space like that, see how there's like an extra white space there? Go ahead and delete it. You need to make sure there's no spaces front, middle, or b the end of it because the space does have its own code and it won't recognize it. So once everything's good, you hit change. You'll get this confirmation screen saying that the addresses were swapped. Go ahead and uncheck the change bar, come back to the game screen, go to the next item, rinse and repeat.
Now notice down here, pay attention to the bottom portion where it'll change from the last item to the new item. Boom. That's all you need. Once you see that change, you know that it's locked on Serpent Stone. You can confirm again by going here. And now let's say we want Arbor Blessing, right? Go back, change, paste, uncheck, return, next, bind, rinse and repeat. This is also going to work for schematics. I don't advise trying to switch craftables into weapons or armor. One, it won't work. And two, it's better just to keep like-minded items to like-minded swaps. So you, if you want an herb, use an herb. If you want a schematic, you can still use an herb because schematics are the exception. They're hard-coded so that you can only purchase one instance. Even if you edited such that, you know, let's say you had a schematic here with a 1000 count, that's just a visual representation. Once you buy it, it'll disappear because it's hard-coded to only let you buy one schematic. Uh, so let's go ahead and now switch Samite into the Refined Battle Mage Coat schematic. Okay, You don't have to do that each time, I just do it as a further confirmation because I lose my train of thought easily. <laughs> it's good. Uncheck. Go to the next one change down here so I know it's good to go. We'll do the arms next. Change. Uncheck. Good to go. And I guess I'll do it. A weapon. Just to show you. So what's a weapon I know? Staff of the Void. My favorite staff to use for my Inquisitor. Looks really good on her. And uh, this is where that search function is going to be useful. There we go. And just to confirm, we should be on iron. We're still on iron. Swap it. All good. Now, I could continue, you know, rinse and repeat until I run out of items to swap. So once you're all done, exit the shop. I recommend just unchecking this. You don't have to, but it just helps to reset it. See, now we're back to square one. So it's just nice to reset. And you can leave this on. It doesn't do much of an issue. Now, this is where your game will crash if you try to open the store again. There's a video on YouTube where someone opens the store after they've edited and it's fine. Not the case anymore. I'm not sure if it was changed from a patch or whatever, but... It'll crash your game if you try to open the store. Not going to do it now because I already know what's going to happen. So instead what you do, you just create a new save. You can overwrite your previous one, but I recommend just making a new one in case, you know, you mess up or something bad happens. You can just reload the, the clean file, you know, the, the untainted file if you want. And once you reload the save you just made, if you go back to the buyback menu, boom, there we go. We have the vein. We have the Battle Mage Coat, Battle Mage Coat Arms, and Arbor Blessing. And that's the meat and potatoes of the item editor.